All right, joining us now for the first time on Tech News Tonight is Esteban Contreras, Director of Strategy over at Sprinkler. Hello, Esteban. Welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. And I'm so glad that you are here because we're focusing our topic today on Facebook, who's kind of some interesting things going on in the news. First of all, let's talk about a story uh, that I read uh, this morning in Wired, why Facebook just launched its own dark web site. Now, you know, it's, it's at first glance, you think that goes against everything that I know about Facebook, right? Facebook is all about sharing as much data as possible. So what's the deal? Yeah, I think, I mean, Facebook is the world's largest social network and privacy and security has always been important to users. Uh, you know, users may say that they, they really care about privacy and security, but for most of us, HTTPS is enough. We see HTTPS and that makes us feel like a website is secure. That's mm -hmm. what we, we've been told. Um, with this announcement, Facebook is basically saying that they're taking security to a new level. Um, and the focus is on Tor, which is a browser that allows you to have online anonymity so you can surf the web. The interesting thing about this is that when someone is using Tor, uh, basically they uh, appear to be in multiple countries at the same time. So they may be in one country, they may be in Canada in one second, and then they appear to be in Europe. Um, this would not be normal behavior for most of us, but in Tor, this is this is kind of how Tor works for people that are using Tor. So this uh, allows Facebook to say that they're enhancing their security infrastructure for uh, those users in particular. So is that a, a dark web or simply a, a way for Facebook to provide access to Tor users? I think that that's, that's really what's happening. Anybody that's using Tor has that extra level of of security if they want to take advantage of it. I mean, Facebook currently has, what, 1.3 or so billion users. Do you think, it, you know, and obviously the, the, the goal is to continue growing <laughs> until we reach the entire right. population of Earth, but are there enough uh, users who are not only familiar with the Tor network, but are going to appreciate this and possibly use Facebook more than they're using it or, or even sign up for the first time to, to really make a dent in those numbers? Yeah, and I, I think that that may be what Facebook is after, right? There are countries where censorship is a problem, where surveillance is a problem, and people are using certain technologies. We, we've heard about people using fire chat as a way to just avoid, avoid the internet altogether. Um, this may be a way for Facebook to uh, allow a certain group of people that are using Facebook as everybody else, but they're going through Tor to be able to do exactly that without them having to shut down accounts that maybe don't need to be shut down because it's just a normal person trying to use Facebook like we all do, but they're using it in a place where uh, maybe that's not uh, that's not uh, allowed or, or even legal. So it is an interesting measure that Facebook is doing, and it is, it is kind of surprising for many, I think. Speaking of Facebook, Facebook uh, is definitely a place where uh, the company wants us to have as many conversations um, as, as possible uh, in its news feed. There's an interesting Mother Jones article today that Facebook wants you to vote on Tuesday. It's a, it's a voting day here in the U.S. Here's how it messed with your feed in 2012. So it's looking back to how our news feeds might have been manipulated by the company, which is, I know this is a it's a sore subject for certain Facebook users who say, do not manipulate me. I don't like the algorithm floating things to the top to encourage me to feel a certain way or do a certain thing. So how is Facebook messing with users' feeds when it comes to politics? Yeah, Facebook's really been doing this for longer than 2012. As we've heard about studies as early as 2010, in which some users were allowed to say whether they had voted. In some cases, they would see the photo of themselves and a photo of their friends. And so, you know, when 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 you think about potential tests in which some people are allowed to see some content around a political nature and others are not, some people will start to say, well, with the with the reach and the scale of Facebook, well, then that could manipulate or change people's opinions. Um, I, I don't know whether that is the case. But it is interesting that Facebook is able to, to play with things like that. Um, however, I think in moving forward, because there, this has been controversial, um, it's hard to tell whether Facebook will reveal uh, findings on studies of that sort. But it's clear that Facebook is, is always testing, as every other website is always testing and trying to provide a better experience. Facebook will always say that their goal is to get people to get out there and vote. Have you seen a lot of 
voting type uh, stories flow to the top of your own Facebook news feed, Esteban? I have not noticed, but I definitely noticed them in the past. Um, and I and you know back when when Foursquare was popular, Foursquare was trying to do the same thing. Gowalla did a few things, so it, it's not something that's new. But I think it is something that people are more aware of, and so mm. Facebook will probably be a little bit more careful. Um, the fact that I'm in Canada also means that you know after me living in the U.S., I saw more of this, and now I'm not. I don't know what that means, uh, but I'm definitely not seeing anything right now, and it makes sense simply because I'm in Canada now. Right. I mean, at least Facebook, uh, Facebook has got their uh, t targeted feed uh, working <laughs> at least pretty well, exactly. uh, assuming that, of course, you're no longer interested in the politics <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Esteban Contreras is the director of strategy at Sprinkler. That's Sprinkler without an E. Uh, let folks know before we let you go how they can uh, learn more about what you do. Yeah, go to twitter.com slash social nerdia. And if you want to learn about what Sprinkler does, uh, go to sprinkler.com. That's a really good uh, Twitter handle, social nerdia. I like that. Thanks. Good times. Good times. Thanks, Esteban. Thank you.